Hey everybody, welcome back. If you want to add some realism to your sim flying, let's talk about taxiing. Taxiing isn't one of the most exciting subjects in the world, but it's something that has a lot more to it than most sim pilots realize. For those of you who don't know, I am an instrument rated pilot in real life, and I had a primary flight instructor who is a stickler for taxiing well. So let's take a look first of all at our taxi route today. First of all, a big thank you to the graphics department at the Island Sim Pilot channel. You guys did a fantastic job. So here's where we are, and we're looking to depart this airport. Now the winds are runway 340 at 6. We've got two choices. We've got runway 33. We've got runway 24. Runway 33 is better aligned with the wind, but the wind's only 6 knots. And runway 33 is 2,700 feet long. Runway 24 is 5,000 feet long. So I'm taking runway 24. What we're going to do today for taxi is come up here along Delta, cross runway 1533, continue on Bravo 3, take a right on Bravo, and we could go straight ahead and make an intersection departure from Bravo. The reason I don't want to do that, I always like to use the full length of the runway. And the reason is, if I take an intersection departure from Bravo here, and we start our takeoff roll and we have some sort of a mechanical problem, flight control problem, whatever the case may be, I want the full length of the runway to be able to deal with whatever that problem is. Let's say I get airborne and the engine quits 20 feet off the ground. It happens. And if I've taken off from Bravo rather than Kilo back here, I've left a good 20% of the runway behind me that I could have used and didn't. And that could be the difference between a good outcome and a bad outcome. So I always take the full length of the runway. So that's our taxi route today. All right, so here we are in the plane. We've got the engine on. First thing you wanna do when you get the engine going, you wanna lean the mixture. And the reason why you lean the mixture is you don't wanna build up carbon on the spark plugs, which could cause the engine to quit. So lean the mixture for taxi. How much is too much? You can't lean it too much. If you lean it too much, the engine quits, then you just restart it. So you don't have to worry about leaning too much. Just lean the engine, pull out that red knob, lean the engine for taxi. All right, now let's talk about a couple of things that we're gonna look for on the instruments, the flight instruments as we taxi. First of all, let's take a real quick look at the compass. That's about what, a 154 heading, right? We look down here, we're good to go, about a 154 heading. One of the things we want to look for as we're taxiing is that the heading indicator shows known headings. Now, what are known headings? We're going to be taxiing here along Delta. That's paralleling runway 6. So as we're taxiing along right here, we want to make sure it's showing approximately 060. When we take a right here on Bravo, it's going to be paralleling runway 15. We want to make sure again that it's showing about 151 as a heading on Bravo because the runway that's parallel is heading on 151. Now before we set off, we've got the winds. Let's take a look at the winds and the weather. 310 at Niner, which means the winds are coming from about right here. That's another thing we want to keep in mind as we're moving along. Our altimeter is 3033 and our altimeter is set. Now here is our airport elevation, 164 feet. When we have our altimeter setting correct, our indicated altitude on the altimeter should be within 75 feet of field elevation. If it's not, you wanna get an updated altimeter setting. In this particular case, it's right about 160, so we're good to go. If it was showing 200, you're still good to take off. If it's showing 100, you're still good to take off. So that's something you wanna check before you get going. Next thing we wanna look at as we get moving, as we start making turns, in the turn coordinator, the little airplane in the turn coordinator should follow the turns that we make in the as we taxi along, and the ball should swing to the outside. So when we make our left-hand turn here onto Delta, this little airplane should show a left-hand turn and this ball should swing to the outside. We'll keep an eye on that as we taxi along. Principles on taxiing. Don't taxi too fast. Tax at about a brisk walking pace. Don't ride the brakes. Uh, you'll see, I'll get us moving and I'm gonna take my, and I'm just gonna pull the throttle to idle, let the airplane roll along. 
The other thing we want to do is stay on center line. No sloppy taxiing. So let's get moving here. Toes on the brakes before you release the parking brake. Now we'll release the parking brake. And take a quick look. Make sure there's nothing out here that we can run into. And now as soon as the airplane gets moving, we want to tap the brakes. And the reason is you want to make sure that the brakes are working before you get moving too quickly. So remember what we said when we make this left turn, the little airplane should show a left turn and the ball should swing to the outside. And that's exactly what's happening. Now we said the winds were three one zero at what six knots, I believe it was. So because it's basically a straight crosswind, you can see the wind is coming from like right that direction. We want to put in a full left aileron correction and hold that so that we don't have any what can happen is that that wing can get lifted up tip us over scrape that wing wing tip and then we've got a, a pretty expensive problem so we got to hold our crosswind correction now we're going to pull some power out and just let the plane roll along at a walking pace and you notice I'm on the center line. How do you know you're on center line? Keep that yellow line between your feet. That's close enough. That's going to keep you pretty much on center line. Another thing you want to make sure you do, keep your head up. Don't be looking down at charts at avionics. Don't be looking at your EFB. Don't be looking at anything else. As you're taxing, you want to keep your head up for exactly this reason. See this? I mean, come on. Keep your head up, keep your eyes out the window. Now we're coming up here to the threshold of runway 15. So let's take a quick look here at some things. How do you know which taxiway you're on? You see this black square right here with a, with a D in it. The phrase to remember is black square, you're there. So this is a black square, we're on taxiway, taxiway Delta. This is in red for a reason because it's a runway. They wanna make sure we don't miss that. Runway 1533 is coming up. So whenever I come up to a runway on a taxi, I come to a complete stop. You want to come to a stop before these double yellow lines. These double yellow lines mean that you cannot cross them without ATC clearance. Now, let's say you've landed on this runway and you turn left to get off the runway. These dashed lines you can cross without ATC, ATC clearance. And the way to remember that is you can dash across the dash. If you come to solid lines, you cannot cross them without ATC clearance. So, the, so what I'm gonna do, come to a stop, and I'm gonna make sure that there's no traffic on the runway. So I'm gonna look down here, make sure there's no traffic on the runway, no traffic on the runway that way. I'm also gonna do the best I can to look at the final approach path. Make sure I don't see anybody coming across the final approach path. The other thing to do before you get onto an active runway, turn your landing lights on. You want your nav lights, your strobe lights, your beacon, your landing light. You want everything on because you want to be as visible as possible. And this is the one place where I might give you an exception to the rule of taxiing slowly. You want to taxi rather vigorously is what I was looking for to get across this runway. So take another look. Make sure you don't see anything. Cross the runway. Not fast, but not slow either. Get yourself to the other side. We're going to see coming up over here on the left. Bravo 3, black square. We're there and we see the this Bravo sign that shows the left and right is taxiway Bravo. Once we're across those double yellow lines, we are off the runway. We're gonna make a right-hand turn here. And again, you can see the little airplane's making a right. We're getting, that ball is moving to the outside of the turn coordinator. Remember before, we were also talking about known headings. We wanna see run, we wanna see about a one five on this heading, which is what we see. The wind is behind us, three one zero, so we don't need to put in any, put in any crosswind correction. We can just go straight here. And again, keep your eyes out the windows. 
you want to slow down in anticipation of a turn you you want to use as little brakes as possible the brakes on an airplane um, they're not very big they don't last very long and they are expensive to replace so here we are back on this heading where we want to keep that crosswind correction in another thing to think about blue edge lights to taxiways taxiways have blue edge lights runways have white edge lights so if you're trying to take off and land and you see blue edge lights you may be making a mistake so keep that in mind i'm going to come up here and i'll show you we're, we're about to make that right hand turn and hold short of the runway but we have a high wing airplane so i'll show you a little trick we want to do when you have a high wing airplane everything is, is looking good and as we're coming up here to make this turn i want to start now looking down the final approach path and see if there's anybody coming in to land if it's a non-towered field then i can just continue around get on the runway and get going if i don't see any traffic right there but if i'm going to stop before i make this turn onto the runway you can see the runway hold short line is right there I want to stop at a 45 degree angle right here. You can see the runway is right here. You would think I would want to pull up there and stop. The reason I want to stop here is because now I can still see the final approach path. If I pulled up square and I'm trying to look out for traffic, all I'm going to see is my wing. So I stop at this angle, make sure there's nobody coming down final. I can now look once again this is correct altimeter is good no no, no indication on the vertical speed indicator that's what we want to see then we want to go mixture rich check our lights lights are good turn our fuel pump on and now we are ready to enter that runway and get going so just remember a couple things taxi at a reasonable pace remember the things that you can look for on your instruments to give you some information about how your instruments are performing as you're getting closer to your takeoff. In other words, if you're coming along, see how that indication right there on the right turn, if it's level and that ball's not moving, then perhaps you want to stop and get that looked at. So uh, heading uh, 24 checks with runway 24 and we can get it going. So hopefully there's a couple things there that you can use in your taxiing, make your flight sim flying a little bit more realistic and the next video we're going to do we're going to take a look at takeoffs and we'll get through the uh we'll get through all the phases of flight and we'll see if we can uh show you some ways to add some realism to your flight sim flying i hope you guys found this interesting if you've got any questions any comments feedback etc please don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section below Hope everybody's doing well, and we'll talk to you soon.